Everybody, welcome back to the channel. HTM here with another ESO video for you. In today's video, I want to dive deep into settings for the Elder Scrolls Online. I do frequently get asked in my ESO videos about what settings I use, how I get my interface looking the way it is. So I wanted just to go through each of my recommended settings for you um, because there's actually quite a lot that's hidden in the settings that I think everybody should know about. So we'll go over all of those. I also want to show you how to set this up on PC and console. Quick bit of background about me. I When I started playing ESO, I actually played exclusively on console. I actually think ESO has one of the best gamepad modes in an MMO. It's you know one of the few MMOs that's actually playable on consoles. Uh, because ge generally MMOs have, you know, so many buttons and so many commands and things that you have to do. And I'm actually a pretty big fan of the gamepad UI. And that's basically what I'm going to be showing you. I still use it actually a lot, even though I play a little bit more on PC nowadays. So in this video, again, I want to go over all of those important settings as far as setting up your gameplay, setting up your combat, your uh, buffs, your stat displays, and then I will be showing you how to do it both on the PC version as well as in gamepad mode for consoles. So let's jump into it. So I'm not gonna bother with video and audio. I'm going to assume you're gonna do what's best for you in terms of whatever system you're using. Again, PC, Mac, console, whatever. We're gonna jump right into gameplay settings and highlight some important things you should be doing. Uh, number one, combat cues, these should be on. This is basically the glowing areas on the ground around you that highlight either some beneficial like friendly effects or some enemy AOEs that you want to avoid. Both of these are completely customizable. For friendly effects, I have mine green. For enemy effects, I have mine purple. Once you select these, you should be able to change, you know, whatever color you want. And then you can also test these out. Brightness is also customizable as well. Double tap to dodge, that's going to be on PCs and Mac only. I have it on, but I don't typically use it. I prefer to have a dedicated button for dodge. And of course, this doesn't affect consoles at all because you will be combining buttons to dodge on console. Another great option is prevent attacking innocence. Make sure this is on as well so you don't accidentally attack a guard or a merchant or something like that. Now, a very important setting that you need to enable both for PCs and consoles is quick cast ground abilities. This was really frustrating to me before I figured it out. So basically a ground ability would be something like endless hail, where it has a targeted effect that you can aim on the ground. Now the default for this setting is automatic, which sounds good, but it's actually not that great because it means you have to click twice, once to enable the skill and aim it, and the second time to fire off the ability that's really a huge waste of time. So you want to make sure this is set to on. Again, quick cast ground abilities, you want that on for sure. Now, a lot more time savers are here in the item section. I do recommend you consolidate area loot. This just basically means that when you loot one corpse, it will automatically check all of the corpses in the area and put all of that loot into one window, which then you can choose from. Now, on top of that, I do typically switch on auto loot. So that saves me another click. It's going to put all of those items automatically into my inventory as soon as I click on the corpse. Now you do have some other nice effects you can put on here. So prevent stealing. This is so helpful, you guys. I can't count how many times I've been clicking on like a merchant or a vendor in a town trying to open up the trading window and I accidentally steal something on the shelf behind them. Turn this on. You won't have to deal with that anymore. Uh, craft bag should be on if you're an ESO Plus member. And then you have some options for hiding things on your character and on your mount. Not a huge deal, so you can choose what to do there. So that covers our gameplay settings. Another major area that I wanna show you guys is the combat section, particularly the display, the combat text, the buffs. That's where you can update how all of that stuff looks. So for the default settings, I, I really don't like these. If I go out of my settings, you can see basically it doesn't show me anything. So. While this is a little bit nicer for like roaming around, taking screenshots, videos, and what have you, this is not that great for combat. It doesn't show me where my skills are, what they are. 
doesn't even show me my health and my resources, right? So this is pretty terrible. What we want to make sure is that we have all of these turned on. So under combat in the heads up display, instead of all of these being automatic, you're going to change them to always show. So our ability bar always show. That means my skills will always be visible whether I'm in combat or not. Same thing with my attribute bars always show. And resource numbers, I do have this on as number and percent. Of course, that's up to you if you prefer one or the other, but I like to see both. Active combat tips, I usually leave this as automatic. And then ultimate number, I definitely want that on. So now I can show you just a quick comparison with what we saw earlier. You can see now I have all my attribute bars, all my skills are visible. All right, combat text. Uh, ESO does have its own combat text system built into the game. You don't need any add-ons for this and it is quite good. I would recommend turning on most of these, if not all of them, just to show you as much information as possible. Of course, it's up to you. You can turn these off if you think your screen is too crowded. Now, the other thing that I like is ESO's default buff timers. Now, no, it's not quite as fancy as some of the add-ons that are available out there for PC. But again, this, this feature works without any add-ons, so it's available for consoles as well. And it's actually pretty good, I think. So under buffs and debuffs, you're gonna want to make this always show. Uh, this will turn on most of these. The only one that's usually off by default is debuffs from others. I usually just turn that on as well. So now if I jump back into my game, You can see all of my buffs have their own timers that will show debuff timers on bosses as well. That includes, you know, negative effects, dots, whatever. It's very helpful for keeping track of your abilities. And again, this works on PC and console. So the other question I frequently get is, do I use any add-ons? Again, add-ons are only available for PC. You cannot use add-ons on console. And since I played several years as a console player in ESO, I just don't really use them that much. So like I showed you guys, the way I set up my game is completely using the base game settings. I don't use any add-ons for my interface or my buff timers at all. I just use what's in the base game. Now, the only add-on I do recommend or I use once in a while would be anything that has to do with combat, uh, DPS tracking. So for example, combat metrics. I know there's other options as well. Uh, but as far as what add-ons I use, again, that's really the only thing I make use of if I'm testing out DPS on a build or something like that. Uh, otherwise, I'm just using the in-game settings. So with that said, we'll go ahead and wrap up the video on my recommended game settings for ESO, both for PC and console. If you liked the video today, don't forget to like it. If you're new around here, make sure you're subscribed to the channel for many more ESO builds and guides. I do put those out every single week. And if you'd like to support the channel further, there'll be links to my social media down below, as well as the new website, hacktheminotard.com. I do have written guides there for you guys as well. Hey everybody, quick heads up that we are officially rolling out members only videos here on HTM starting now. What this means is that those of you who are tier two channel members, also known as our elite squad, you'll be getting access to some exclusive members only content, including unique and off meta builds like the new Venom Shot build, which you're seeing in the background now. This is my version of a Stamina Dragonite bow build on an Argonian using the new Vatishran Hollows point blank snipe. Yeah, it's different, but it's also a lot of fun. Great for solo and even group content. So if you're interested in seeing more builds like this, just click on that join button for more information. As always, thanks again for watching. I hope you're doing well. Stay safe out there and I will see you around in the next video.